And when you take in the lunge, turn and then move. Okay. Throw a shovel hook to the body. Boom, a shovel hook with the other side. Boom. These are all. And then, now, see, now he, when I have this, he jabs and I get out of the way. He jabs and I get out of the way. Attacking long range, okay? Then it close range, okay? Then it's close. It's Master Wong here today. It's another beautiful day, and we're gonna have another good conversation and talking about the training with Sifu Singh. And as you know, last time some of you listened to us and we talk about a certain subject into the JKD, to the Tai Chi, the way he how he think and the philosophy behind it. You'll love it so much. So I invite him back today again, and we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the training that you train on individual. And, uh, and he'll introduce you a little bit about himself, a little bit more so you can understand more. So Sifu Singh, welcome in to this podcast. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Master Wong. Pleasure to be back. Uh, pleasure to be talking to everybody out there. Thank you for all the love and the kind words you guys gave us for last week's talk. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, because we train, uh, we doing martial arts and we do have our students when we're teaching, but a lot of time, we train our own. We train our own because sometimes you you wait for the partner or you you get up and uh, uh, get to do some training. The partner not freaking there, and sometimes the only time they control is you. Uh, normally, I get up quite early, so I do my own stuff. And sometimes you wait for the partner to turn up. It's a little bit late, so a lot of time we train on our own, don't we? So a lot of students, a lot of um, people out there asking, if you're on your own, how do you train? Sifu Singh, how do you train on your own and stuff like that? And a little bit about uh, the secret behind it. Well, I think, I think it's, a, it's a very good topic because if we wait for our training partners all the time, then we're always waiting. Uh, people can only come certain times, right? And so, you know, I think the biggest thing when you come to training is, is, is martial arts uh, a hobby or is it how you live? If it's a way of life, you're, gonna tra you're always training. Right, you're walking down the street. You're That's training, right. you're observing. You're aware. The training is always happening. In the, in the subscribe before your enemy do. Otherwise, your enemy know a lot about it. Then you will have a bit of problem. Oh, huh? you just live that way. But more specific, more specifically, when we talk about training for martial arts, I mean self training and the amount of time you spend training by yourself is in your control. Exactly. So if you look at like every amazing master, right? That's like from Ip Man, from Wing Chun or Bruce Lee, spent a lot of time training by himself. Right. Miyamoto Musashi, the greatest swordsman of all time, never even had a training partner, you see? So I think the most important thing is how much time you spend training by yourself is going to determine how good you're going to be. Now, that doesn't mean you don't train with a partner because you have to have a partner there. But you can't control how much time a partner is going to be there. So get as much partner training as you can get. Nothing replaces it. But at the exact same, same time, spend as much time sharpening your own sword, who you are, um, as much as possible. And when you do do that, you need to have a heavy bag. 
you need to be have a heavy bag to hit because a heavy bag when you hit it feels like you're hitting through the thing you know right. uh, i have a heavy bag then i have a speed bag that moves a little bit more and then i use a mukjong wooden wooden dummy and i do a lot of shadow boxing you know and so shadow boxing or with filipino with the weapons the empty hands um, and I and and the most important thing when you're training by yourself, there's four secrets. Yeah, the four secrets right. of the mind. Uh, number one is imagination. If if you're training by yourself and you're not using your imagination, that means like you're just doing moves, right? You might as well go do an aerobics class. Right, <laughs> right. right. Go 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 do aerobics class. Not the same. But when you're moving, I, if I use my emotional content and I create an opponent in front of me, I use my imagination, it'll still make me feel the way it did when I was against that guy, right? right. But the thing is, you have to have experiences, right? So then people will be like, well, if you've never been in street fights, you don't have to get in street fights, but if you have a good boxer or wrestler in front of you that is much better than you, for example, you'll remember the feeling, right? What it's like, so I remember. You, so, so basically, you, you mimic the way uh, the way you train, you mimic the situation, and then you're able to move that way. So helping you to able to more alert of the training, a bit more more realistic. Is that right? Absolutely. You have to imagine the opponent, what they look like, how 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 long are their arms, how tall are they? Do they stand in a right lead, a left lead? Are they a boxer or the rest? So you have, there's limitless imagination that you can use to create. Um, I, I look at training as, you know how people nowadays, they have virtual reality? Right, right. Yes, yes. This is the ultimate virtual reality. You use your mind and, and you create the opponent. Sometimes in my mind, I think like UFC John Jones right. or Lesnar. Like what would it be like if I have to enter and move with him? Right. Uh, but I have experiences from with professional boxers, for example. And then I remember the first time he hit me with a body shot, what it felt like, right? Then how quick the jab is. So you remember the experience, and but you bring that uh, emotion into the, the 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 bag. So if I hit the heavy bag, I move my head. I move my head. I hit the heavy bag, and I and I'm I'm imagining that the opponent is there. Uh, that brings a, a the spirit into it because the imagination leads to sensation. Because right. if I have the right imagination, then my body can feel what it would be like uh, if if the person's in front of me. Right. So then basically, have... so basically, when you're working with this kind of movement, uh, a lot of time, if you work in a heavy bag, or oh, the moving object that will helping you to keep your arm, your your feel of the of movement when you're punching, you you know yeah. where is it, and the body moves. So it's helping you when you contact in the real situation, you know how the body moves. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because you have to know what it feels like to hit through something. You know, that all the bones, everything has to be aligned. But at the same time, you're also expecting. So, for example, simple for everybody watching. Before you do a jab on the heavy bag, imagine somebody threw a jab at you. So you move your head, you hit the jab. Then you move your head out of the way because he tried to counter you. Right. So in your mind, you're thinking that somebody's going to counter you on the way to the bag. Then somebody's going to counter you on the way away from the bag. Then now it's not just bang, 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 right? It's like bang, you move, bang, move, bang, 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 bang. You, you, it becomes more, more real, right? And then your mind, you use your intention and you direct your attention onto the, the technique you're working, right? Because when you work by yourself, it's about the tech, you, you, you're, you're sharpening the technique. So you should be learning something new. You should be getting better in every situation. Otherwise, it's boring, right? It's just right. like, oh, I hit the bag. It's boring. But if you don't feel like you're getting better, learning something new, um, or, or, or even sometimes learning something new just means making it more refined, more simple, more easy, uh, and then you get better, that's what then motivates you to train more, right? So whether you do that on a heavy bag, and then mukjong is very important because then now you start to trap and the arms are there. And then you get out shadow box, imagine opponent, do it with weapons. I think that makes a huge difference on your martial arts training, at so, least for, for the physical part. So did you bring a lot of like the, 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 the pop into the, the, the equation of the training, the, the pop, you know, the pop, you're using a lot of that. You're using some of the stuff for the ground, so you can imagine like 
attack things and certainly you fall down, you need to get up ready to move and, and contact. Because I saw you on um, doing the, uh, uh, the JKD with uh, uh, one is a seminar that you do in the hand with the, uh, with the tummy, like the yeah. way you do, you call it a thread in the needle. That's yeah. a beautiful movement, you know, the way you move the hand. It's got them so fast onto the tummy and the person even they're blocking it. It's very difficult to block because if you block that you're over here, you block it over there, you're over there. You're just like moving all the time to make this movement. It's like got to threading the needle literally into the eye, literally. Yeah, literally into the eye. See the, the thing with the muk jong, the the people limit themselves because they in my mind the muk jong is a moving person. Those are just reference points. So it's not like right arm, left arm, those are angles. It could be a kick, it could be a hook, it could be somebody grabbing my neck, it could be somebody trapping my hand. So if you don't use your imagination and imagine that that mukjong is moving like a real person, then you're just gonna stand there and kind of do it like that instead of making it like that because that's, that's the thing, that's what really you have to work. And, it, and man, I broke my fingers many times trying to thread the needle. But once you get used to threading the needle with the precision, then when That's why you don't touch me. Get your t-shirt now. When somebody holds their hands or try to block, they can't block. You can't. Because the block no. is always slower than the needle right yeah it's too fast it's uh, moving too fast the way the hand is moving too fast to be able to uh, to to block it up because to block it you need to move but you feel where they come they're already being opposite in line that's that's a beautiful move you know and this is why a lot of time when people are doing wing chun they're just moving a body around but really and truthfully you're learning that as a as a uh, movement but you have to move around it to able to to feel that the real uh, position, because in the real fights, nobody gonna stand still. They have they move, they, they move very fast, they move very quick. And a lot of time when you're moving, you're using a lot of elbow to, to defend, because if they're punching, your elbow come up already, that more than likely, they're cutting the fist. And if they're cutting the fist, they're gonna be a little bit in pain. You're already in line to be the attacking. So this is important. Can you talk to them a little bit about because in Vegas, uh, when we do when you do the, the seminar, there are a lot of movement like that you're working. So a lot of time people watching it, they don't really thinking very effective. You know what I mean? Hmm. So I think one of the things is that you so what I was doing was you're 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 cut defang, they, they call it defang the snake. So if you have a snake and you take the fang out, uh it's well, like it an anaconda, it's not gonna squeeze you, right? So like a poisonous snake, you take the fang out, it can't fight you anymore it's a principle from filipino martial arts but the idea is that if i'm moving and i go here boom somebody punches or cut i cut i cut then my defense becomes offense right so i don't believe in defense to be honest because defense is always slow so i would rather attack you or attack your attack right so as long as i you I attack you and then attack your attack i'm always attacking means i'm always looking to cause pain so if I can cause pain, I steal that moment. When you go, ah, or you go, ah, then I hit the next opening and I'm gone. I mean, that's, that's what we have to get really good at. And I think the other thing is when you look at like a real street fight perspective, because, um, and even in, even in sport fighting, this works. But see, in sport fighting, there are rules. So I can't hit the eyes. I can't hit the groin. So the, the guy can take a punch, right? It has to be so clean to knock them out. But in the street, you can't take a shot to the eye. Even if no. you took the shot to the eye, the groin is open. If you take a shot to the groin, the throat is open. So the, the concept, and Bruce Lee talked about it, um, Miyamoto Musashi talked about it, Angel Kabbalas uh, from Sarada Eskrima talked about it. They say three moves and a man must fall. So three moves means there's three beats. One and two and three. It should be over here. It, it shouldn't last longer. If it is, you got to get back out and come back in again because whatever you're doing is not working. Right. So like in a game of chess, if you play somebody really good in chess, they play you three, four, five moves ahead and not one move to one move. 
So if I go here, I know you're going to block there and I'm coming back on the open. And I expect you to block that, so I'm going to come back here. So the idea is, or if I punch you, I expect you to parry, and then I come and I hit again. Or if I punch you, I expect you to punch me back, and so I counter and hit you back. So I think the idea is that it's, it's attack, counter, recounter. And you have to master that one and two. Attack, counter, recounter. Attack, counter, recounter. And if you get sharp at that, it'll give you a big advantage of, of winning, like quick, uh, winning the exchange quick. Because, you know, you and I both know in a street fight, I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there long. I don't, I don't want the person to get a hold of me. I don't want to find out how good they are. <laughs> I, want, I want to hurt them quick and get out. And that's, that's the right. most important thing. So a lot of people are watching food this year. Comment below here and tell and talk to us if you are thinking what we're saying is may sense to you. Because a lot of time, a lot of this kind of thing, you have to go through the experience to be able to understand a bit more. Because sometimes you're training, you didn't go through the experience of it. It's very difficult to, for you to understand it. Now, uh, when you're training on this kind of movement here, in the street, it's very different into the sport. Okay, the sport is very different to the street. The sport, the most person can take punishment, then you have the chance to survive. But in the street, you cannot take punishment because they're armed. Most of them, they're armed. Okay, so what do you think of people turn around and say, your movement, the technique that we're training on uh, JKD side, Wing Chun side, that it's not fit into the cave or the uh, ring because they're, they're, they're going to get beat up in the ring. So what did you say about that kind of uh, stuff when people talk about that, when we're training in this kind of environment? So I think it's a very valid, uh, it's a very valid um, opinion because I'll tell you why. Um, if you can't, if, for example, we take Bill G to the eyes, right? If you can't do a Bill G to the eyes against the boxer who's trying to actually hit you, you don't have timing, angle, and distance. Now, what ends up happening most of the time, there's two kinds of fights, right? Two kinds of street fights. One, a random attack, somebody jumps you, yeah. and you got to react. Another, you get into a street fight, means no rules, and the guy knows how to fight. Now, those are two different things. So the thing is, we have to have a training method that allows us to be able to deal with everything. So oftentimes what the argument is, I'll hit them in the eyes, I'll hit them in the groin. But they don't have timing, angle, and distance properly to be able to do it against somebody who's moving around, somebody who's offering resistance. Now, if you train in boxing, MMA, and sport stuff, but you understand now, because you're getting hit, you're moving, you understand aliveness and movement. Right, right. Now the goal is take the street movement and make it fit against the boxing, kickboxing, MMA movement. And now you know that if you could do it against them, you could do it against some dude on the street, you know? Right. So I, th I think both is necessary because the other side is you've got somebody who's a sport fighter and they expect a sport fight in the street. So then right. they're thinking, oh, I'll grab this guy. And they go to grab the guy, the guy pulls a knife and sticks. That's him. right, that's right. right? Or they take the guy to the ground because they're used to an MMA taking him to the ground, and then his buddy comes and bashes his head in with a boot. That's right. So, so I think the, the cool part here is that we live in the best time for martial arts because now you could train your Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do, street effectiveness, but now go get a boxer, kickboxer, wrestler, and be like, high five, hey, buddy, let's grow together. Try to take me down while I try to hit you in the eyes. And then do rounds like that, right? Then, uh, for example, I teach a lot of biting. You've seen, I teach a lot of biting, yes, a lot yes. of gouging. But I'm also a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hopefully this year I get my black belt. I work really hard, been doing it for 16 years. But the thing is, when I go to the ground, I need to know how to move like a snake, like a Jiu-Jitsu person. And so instead of doing arm bars, triangles, I can bite and hit and gouge, but I know how to move is the vehicle. But somebody can say, oh, I'll just bite the jujitsu guy if he takes you down. The moment you start to bite him, he's going to push you away right. and he's going to crush you, right? And now <laughs> you're in a lot of trouble. So I, I, think that the, I think the answer is you have to do them both to take this and apply it here. But you need friends 
in a cooperative That's environment, right. not like a challenging, I challenge you. That's the problem. Because now you're going to learn. Because if you want to learn how to stop a takedown defense, you have to learn the takedown defense from a wrestler. Right. Then you have to train it against the wrestler to get the timing. Yeah. And then you could say, oh, I'll hit him with a knee when he comes in. If you just say, I'll hit him with a knee when he comes in, but there's work. no timing, you're lying to yourself. Yeah, and I think that's uh, quite important. So a lot of people don't realize as well as, as we know when we when you're training. A lot of time when you train for street and train for the sport, it's slightly different thing. So when you're at home, how do you able to train? With, because we talk about at home training, how do you able to train on something like that and then try to cross over to go into the sport and don't attack people in the eye because in the sport you can't use it for that. For the eye couch in the eye and kick people that are going, you know. So how somebody at home training can be using in the street as well as take into the competition if you need to. I, I think they have to train it that way. You have to you have to you have to, you have to train them a little separately that way. Because if you're just somebody who's always training for the street, then your natural reaction is gonna be to do that over there. So you have to immerse yourself. So I have teachers in uh you know i've spoken last time in wing chun and taiji and Jeet Kune Do, but then i have boxing teachers and wrestling and jujitsu and mma coaches that i work on stuff and i do th their rule set with them right. so i get used to like in boxing i think everybody would benefit a lot from boxing and rest by themselves because right. then when you do it long enough you understand and now uh, for example if I want to trap you and I don't know how to box, it's, it's, it's not like the guy's going to approach me like this. That's right, right. Right? Unless you're Wing Chun, I'm Wing Chun, and we're like, oh, okay, good. We're both right. Wing Chun. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah. The odds of that is not like a Kung Fu movie. That's right. He's going to move. Yeah, and so yeah, I have yeah. to learn how to trap that. But the only way I can learn to trap that is if I know that structure. Right. Then the next part is wrestling. Because the moment I trap, if you trap me, I dissolve and I grab you. It's a problem. So, I got to know that energy. So it's energy, right? So we have to study energy, which is pressure, structure, angles, uh, skill, style, techniques. And it's fun. That's the point. It's got to be fun. But the problem, brother, is that it's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. That's what makes it fun. But I think the thing happens is people's own egos get in the way. And they think that they, as soon as you think that what you do can beat somebody, you're dead. Right. Right. You, you stop growing, man, because there's, here's the truth. There's always somebody way better that's than right. you out there. That's I'm right. always training for the guy who's going to kick my ass. But that's, right? that's I want to survive that guy kicking my ass, not kick his ass. Yeah, but that's a good thing, though. You're, you're, the, this is why it's very interesting to understand about even though in that kind of a learning, you're learning a lot, a lot of different things. Very good at what you do, but very humble and understand and, and able to understand that it's many, many, many things out there to be learned and to understand. Because a lot of time when people don't understand it, that's where the problem is. They're thinking what they're doing or what they're learning is good. And that's where all this argument about stupid thing about can you fight with an MMA guy or can you do this with this person or can you do that? It's not no relevant. Why don't they just train? Because the enemy is not ourselves. Yeah. You know? Is it? The enemy is not ourselves. The enemy completely different. And when you're training on all this kind of thing, when you go in the street and somebody attacks you, they're completely different kind of people. They never trained martial art before. Okay, they never trained martial art before. So it's going to be very, very difficult if, you, if we don't think uh, properly and able to have the, the, the humbleness to able to uh, respect other martial artists and learn from them. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, if there's a secret in, in, in martial arts, I think there's two, there, there are two secrets that go together. Number one, uh, Miyamoto Musashi Gore no Shou, he wrote the Book of Five Rings and he says, yes. the way is in training. The secret is in training and how you're training. Now your training has to be about how well you can adapt to different situations and not force situations. It's like, if I'm, I, I want to be like water so I can adapt to any situation, not be like, this is how I'm going to do it. 
Because then if I say, this is how I'm going to do it, and it doesn't work, I'm in a lot of trouble. That's you know, right. uh, the, the big fight that just happened this weekend with Deontay Wilder and yes, uh, yes. Tyson Fury. Hey, man, your, your man brought it home to the UK, the title. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Right? Uh, Wilder didn't adapt. Yes. He didn't adapt. He kept trying to do the same thing, and it didn't work. Yes. He didn't adapt, and he got killed. So uh, Fury adapted. He changed the way he was going to fight. He didn't come in and say, I'm, this is my way. This is my style. Right. This is what my Sifu told me. So I have to fight just like this. Otherwise, because in their mind, they have a delusion that they're dishonoring their style. They're right. dishonoring their teacher. They're dishonoring. I'm like, man, this is insane. Because the whole thing is the way you would honor them is to adapt that knowledge to fit this problem. Right. Right? But that's exactly the same thing in Lido. If it did, this that's exactly the same principle in Lido. You're meeting different people, you need to adapt. You go to different country, you need to adapt. You can't bring your culture in different country. You know, you can't bring your culture into somewhere else. If you're at home, you're a completely different person. You have a different way of living in your house. You come to somebody's house. You have to adapt to the situation. Life is all about adapt and change. If you don't adapt and change, you're not going to survive. So in martial art, I think in we all the same to learn to understand. We learn to understand about adapting the situation. And also, I think it's good it's a learning Tai Chi. Tai Chi is teaching us a lot about that because, because some people, a lot of people look at Tai Chi as very, uh, a very uh, different kind of art they can't use for fighting. They're, they're, they're old people like doing house uh, uh, flower arrangement, you know? Uh, all this kind of movement, they don't understand about the way the, the, the Tai Chi, the method, the, the, the principle, you know? So uh, what, what do you think about that, uh, brother? I think you're completely right. So two things on that. Um, tai Chi to use it for fighting, you already have to need, no, you, you already need to know how to fight. It's like an advanced concept, right? So right. if you don't know how to punch, kick, grapple, throw, and do all that, then you can't really apply it because that's number one, right? Uh, number two, it's Tai Chi is a system of opposites. Means it teaches us the two opposite sides of any situation and how to find the balance. And by balance, it's not 50-50. It's like sometimes it's 80, sometimes it's 20, because right. that's what you need for that situation. So, for example, if I, we have attack and counterattack, those are two opposites. It means because right. if I attack, I go first, you attack, you go first. So that's two opposites. But I have to attack you, be ready for your counterattack. Right. When you are counterattacking me, I'm ready for my counterattack to you. Right. So. It has to play hard and soft. If you expand, I have to contract. Right. If I contract, you have to expand. When it's night, it's gonna be day. That's when right. it's day, it's gonna be night. It's it's a beautiful thing, <laughs> but but it's seeking the opposites, right? And you need what do you need for that? Like your article in Black Belt said, you need awareness. With no awareness, there's nothing. Because right. then I don't know what I'm adapting to. I'm just right. reacting, right? So either you're reacting or you're adapting. But if you don't have awareness of yourself, other people, what's happening around you, and you can't slow it down when everything's going crazy and your heart's pounding, you're in a lot of trouble because then, then you're going to make mistakes. And that's the same in life, right? That's it. That's, that's, how, that's how beautiful thing it is. All go back to natural. All come back to the real life, how we live as a person, as a person, a real human being. And that's adapt to it. So... Some of you watching through this and hear all the stuff that we're talking about sound a bit uh, woo-woo and sound a bit, uh, bit much for some of you because uh, this kind of thing we're talking about is a little bit no more different than what uh, standard uh, we're talking about. But uh, go back to the basic stuff uh, before we, uh, we finish. is answer a uh, uh, comment and leave here and say what do you think about uh, what we're talking about do you want to hear more about this kind of thing that uh, Sifu Singh talking about because it's very fascinating the way he explains certain things because it's all the, uh, the theory as well as uh, the, the common sense you know and it's day today so let's get back to the training on your own to finish them off how they can get better on themselves so your training has to be put into uh three different areas okay so one is martial arts 
martial training means your techniques, your skills, right? And so you use a heavy bag, you use a mukjong, you do shadow boxing, that's training by yourself there. The next training has to be on your physical training. Kettlebells, lifting weights, running, your stamina, your, the physical body, your flexibility, your ability to move. You have to have 100% control of your movement. And most importantly, you, gotta, you can't be in pain. So that's the first place people have to start. You know, people wake up, oh, my back is hurting, my knees hurting, my elbows hurting. You got to go see a professional to get out of pain first. Then we can talk about performance. And then the next part about that performance is that I, train, I plan my schedule, my physical training schedule for the whole year. I start in the beginning of the year. I say, These are my goals. And the goals have to be there from a perspective of what do you want to see. So uh, in key, increase in strength, increase in stamina. That's always what you're looking for. Increase in flexibility and mobility. Those have to be balanced. And you have to be improving. Uh, I'm 42 years old. I've improved every year from the previous year and continue wow. to do so. So it's not like, oh, I'm getting older. That's not in my mind. I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I can't wait till I'm 50 because I'll keep improving and getting better, right? Um, and then the next part, when you're training by yourself, you have to consider fuel. What are you putting in your body, right? What, what, are, you, are, you, are you eating? As a martial artist, you have to treat yourself like a professional athlete. Right. If you don't, your career will be short. Right. I mean, dead honest. And, and, and this is not a knock on anybody because I've been injured. I gained a lot of weight and I lose it but because injuries happen and that's natural. But it's important for us to look in the mirror and be like, what can I do to be the best version of myself physically? Because right. the, 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 the body is a canvas and it's, we have an opportunity to sculpt it the way we want. Right. Um, for performance, it's your weapon. It's the human right. weapon. It's your body. You've got to make it the best possible. And it's fun, too, because then now I'm throwing my kid across. I'm doing stuff. And he's like, my dad's like Superman. I'm like, yeah, that makes me feel good like a dad, that my kid thinks that, right? And then the next part of training, which is very important, is on your, uh, your meditation and your focus and your Spiritual. perception. Spiritual, you, there has to be. See, the, the, if that's not there, it's not about fighting. That's the, the whole point. It's like the whole, if you stick in the realm of fighting, you, you're, you're doing a disservice to your martial art. And right. what I mean by that, art. This, it's not just war. It's martial is war, but then there's an art part. Right. And the art part is how do you find out who you are and express yourself honestly? But you got to look in the mirror and be like, oh, man, that's the good. That's the bad. This is the ugly. These are my problems. This is the type of person I am. I don't deal well with these situations. I get angry on these situations. I'm afraid of these situations. And you have to get to know yourself. And the only place you're going to get to know yourself is through stillness, through the quiet. When you quiet all this in your mind and you go to that place, because that place is where freedom lies, creativity lies. That place is where love exists. Because when, right, when you're holding your daughter, it's like, ah, you're right there. Right. When you're doing a project, writing a book, ah, you're there. Right. When I'm teaching, ah, I'm there. When I'm fighting, ah, I'm there. I'm not up in here yapping to myself. And that's, that's a big problem. The only way we're going to fix that is by how long can you stay on the breath? Right. That's and 90% and, and of success is mindset. And so how much time are we spending training our mind? And right. it's hard in today's world because everything lays like this. Right. I think that's a perfectly put it, uh, Sifu Singh. I mean, that's a perfectly put it. So I think some of you out there like to know more about it and want to follow and read a Black Belt magazine and stuff that because Sifu Singh on there and stuff like that. You need to get hold of them read about it and if you are gonna get your back in uh, in uh, america in vegas then you definitely gonna come and see him uh which part of the part of america that you uh in a way see well that's why i was a little late today so i'm moving actually i live in california currently i live in santa cruz which is northern california right but i'm moving to orange county i'm in orange county right now oh, wow. and i'll break the news to everybody right here with you at, at master wong i'm opening a jeet kune do gung fu academy here in Orange County, close to the spectrum. Um, and uh, I was just looking at places today. Oh, wow. 
we're going to start in the summer. It's a private academy where I'm going to people that are interested can come and interview for a position. And we want to spread the arts, not just Jeet Kune Do, but the Tai Chi, the people who want to live that, that, that lifestyle, the fitness. The, so there's fighting fitness philosophy, right? We right. all have to go together. And uh, I love what I do. Uh, I know you love what you do. That's why I wish you were closer so we could hang out more. I, mean, I think that's the same with most people that are tuning in, that we all have so much in common. So I'm going to be in the, by mid-June, July, I'll be here in Orange County living full-time and opening academy. And you and I will be at uh, Super Show, Century Super Show, uh, a few weeks later. The, I think it's last week of June, for, uh, July 1st to the 3rd, I think. That's right, day. yes. And both of us are teaching over there. I'm doing a pre-conference event also, a six-hour seminar on July 1st. Right. Um, it's, and it's the best place because we get to see everybody there, right? Pitmaster, he's coming, right? He's coming, yes, yes. Master and all, all the all the other great people from Century Black Belt. We get to hang out, spend some time together, and uh, I I love the event, so I'm looking forward. I think I think it's just perfect. So some of you in America and want to really learn the Wing Chun, uh, Tai Chi, and JKD and stuff like that, you have you have to see Sifu Singh and check it out because when you see he the way he do thing and you understand it more because a lot of time when people learn it just about the movement and technique, he fix your mind as well. That's more important because he have a lot of very, very interesting instructor as well uh, that I met in, uh, in, in Vegas. And they are very, very, uh, so like very humble, very loyal on them, like very down to earth people. Not like, you know, sometimes when you train somebody, teach somebody, they think they know some stuff and they become uh, bigger than themselves, you know, like very arrogant. You don't get that with Sifu Singh. And, uh, and the first time I met them, I thought, I thought, I thought we spent a lot of time with Sifu Singh over there. Uh, we only spent a couple of days, didn't we? Yeah, but, but we, we, a lot, of that. we spent a lot of good time together. But it's, that's all we need, you know? Sometimes we don't need, you don't need very much. You need a couple of days, and then you come back again. You see each other again, you know? It's, it's going to be so fun. So that's it. That's a good thing today we talk about. And if you don't want to ask me and Sifu Singh anything, comment below, and if you want, See if we seem to talk more about the spiritual side or the, the, the certain thing into the Chi Kung Do side, the mindset or the principle, then comment below and I invite See if we sing back again. And then we're going to talk more about it. Yeah. Awesome, man. It's always a pleasure and always an honor. And if you guys are out there, you got to definitely check out Master Wong. I think he's one of the most genuine people that I've, that I've ever met. And um, I can't wait to see you, brother. It's, it's going to happen soon now. It's only a few months away. Yeah, it's only a few months away. So, from Master Wong here and Sifu Singh. I will see you all later. Speak to you all soon. Bye-bye. Nice work, mate. <laughs> Have to read my book. Check my book out. Remember, sleep clean, train hard, and don't let anyone bully you again. Time, place, and a method attack. <laughs>